George, if we want to really know what's real, the question of how, how many worlds are there, what kind of things exist, these seems like crazy questions, but they really speak to the, na the deepest nature of reality. Now, some people who would say just one world, just the world we see, a materialistic world. Others would say there's a, a mental world. Other people might add a spiritual world of God. A third. Some people might have a, a platonic world of, of, uh, of uh, numbers and universals and things like that. And all these are different worlds. Uh, how can we as human beings begin to even ask such questions? There are many ways that you can approach it. Let's take a simple case. Uh, do chairs exist? Well, yeah, chairs exist. You're sitting in one. But do all the properties, does a category chair exist? What, pro what defines a chair? Well, it used to be thought that these were necessary and sufficient conditions, but we now know that's not true. We now know there are radial categories where there are central cases of chairs and they go out in various di directions. There are beanbag chairs and all kinds of other chairs. But then, then there are what are called contested concepts. And usually people think about contested concepts in terms of democracy, freedom, art, things like that. I've, I've written a book on the contested concept of freedom. But the, you know, the point is that even chair is contested. I can go to San Francisco and there's a store down there that claims to sell chairs. And I can look around and say, that's a chair? <laughs> you know, well, according to some design theories and some philosophies of design, it's a chair. And according to me, well, it's not. Okay. It's chair, even chair can be a contested concept. So the question is not simply does that entity exist as an entity, but does the category chair and, and what defines it exist outside of you? And the answer is no, it does not. It has to do with how you're understanding the physical things in the world and what properties they have. That's a very powerful thing because it says that the properties that you, you uh, attribute to things in the world have to do with you, like with color, where you... Uh, you know, because of the... We impose our categories on the world as opposed to apprehending real categories in the world that exist independent of us. Right, although the world is real and we interact with it. Doesn't mean there's no reality. It's mm -hmm. not a relativist position mm -hmm. in any way. So that's the first, the first kind of, of case. Uh, does freedom exist? Well, it turns out freedom is a contested concept. And then you ask, well, which of these versions of freedom exist? And, uh, you know, and then freedom has to do with, uh, what people do in the world. Well, how we act brings freedom, can bring one version of freedom into existence or another version of freedom into existence or neither into existence. Uh, that's very important to understand that there are cases where our actions create reality. Uh, you say, for example, does, is time uh, a, a resource? Is it a money-like resource where you uh, can budget it, etc.? That depends on how you live, how people live their lives. There are parts of the world where people don't see time as a money-like resource. It doesn't, wouldn't make any sense to say, do, I didn't have enough time for that. Uh, rather, you know, people just live their lives and uh, they don't worry about that time in that way. So I, I would infer that the, the, this so-called category of universals, whether it's mathematics or, or general categories, is, is not some out, something out there. Okay. And that would eliminate that kind of world, which some people talk about as real. Not just that. I would ask a different question. I would ask, given our metaphors and our mental capacities and the categories that we create, what what... Uh, other th modes of existence would we project onto the world. Okay. And it That's turns right. out that we project all kinds of modes of existence onto the world. So you create a mathematics used to describe the world, and it happens in that mathematics that there are alternative universes. That just because you made up a mathematics to describe the world doesn't mean that other consequences of the mathematics are true. Doesn't mean that other universes exist independently of the mathematics and so on, all right? We created certain things out of our metaphor system, out of our conceptual but system. But it might. I mean, you can't, you can't eliminate that. If you, if you can show mathematically that, that other universes exist, then uh, the, the, the reality of them may be more likely. They still may not exist. But there's no reason to think they do. The interesting question is, where does the very idea that they exist come from? And they come from you from your mind, your projections. And you can make that up about God. 
You can say, well, I've got this metaphor for God. Well, let God exist, just like alternative universes. Uh, you know, or this version of God as opposed to that version of God. Mm -hmm. Or you could make up unicorns and say, well, unicorns exist. I happen to haven't seen any so far, but, you know, make up any concept you want projected onto the world, whether it's mathematical or not. And there are lots of forms of mathematics that are made up that have nothing to do with reality. Sure. Uh, you know, do you want to say that they exist? Uh, you know, there are all kinds of uh, versions of, uh, inf uh, there are many types of infinity in mathematics. Well, which ones do you want to say exist? This one or that one? They contradict each other. They can't both be resolved. But uh, it turns out that, uh, you know, if you want to say everything in mathematics exists in the world, you have contradictory forms of mathematics that can't both exist in the world. I mean, this is important. It's important to understand that the things you attribute existence to come out of your own brain and your own mind. And you have to ask, is that where they're all coming from? How about mental categories as opposed to physical? The, uh, our our uh, intentions, beliefs, desires, uh, the first person experience of w w what, what it feels like to, to be me. Experience is real. You experience it. Now, we do know that there are neural correlates of experience. But if you say, take the experience of seeing a color like green, okay? I see green, I see it in that, that, that plant, right? But I know it's not in the plant. I know that it has to do with me, but I experience it as being in the plant. And I experience green. And the question is, do you experience the same thing? And I assume that you do because presumably you have the same kind of brain and, and, and physiology that I do. But I don't know that for sure. I, I assume that that's the case. Now, um, does that mean that greenness exists independent of human beings? And notice the independent of human beings uh, or of animals, of any kind of animal. You know, chances are no. But, but, the question is, what about other mental categories? Do concepts exist? Well, we know that they're created by, the, by neural circuitry. We know the kinds of entailments and relationships there are uh, between them. We know the kind of behavior that, that leads to them, the, the way language functions relative to them. We can say a lot about concepts, and we can hypothesize that there is such a mental category as uh, a concept of, uh, let's say, well, we have many concepts of causation, not just one. There are like two dozen different ones, but there are real concepts of causation. We understand those, and we can show what kind of neural circuitry would give rise to that. So does that mean, if we put it all together, that really there's just one thing? It's the world. The world happened to, through evolution, make our brains, and our brains have... Uh, through metaphor and through uh, the categories of our brain, have constructed things that look like other things besides this world, but they are really not real. They are the creations are our our own imposition of of categories on this one thing that's the world. We can say they are the impositions of our categories, whether we know that they are quote real outside ourselves. We have no way of knowing. 